So today we have to talk about Tesla stock, but a lot of individuals watching this video are not going to like some of the information that I have to share with you guys as we recently just got some bad data. Now, just yesterday, I highlighted that one of the catalysts that was going to have a huge influence on Tesla stock and the overall market was going to take place at 10 a.m. And that was going to be the job openings report. And if you guys paid attention to what I said in yesterday's video, I said specifically to watch out to see what Tesla does and and how it reacts exactly at 10 a.m. when this report comes out. And so when we take a look, we actually see that Tesla sold off pretty aggressively the minute that report came out. But if we turn our heads to the overall S&P 500 index ETF ticker symbol SPY, we see that the selling pressure is much more prominent the minute the report came out at 10 a.m. And this is because once the report came out, we saw that the total job openings for August actually came in a little bit hotter than expected, meaning that there's a slow pace of decline in the labor demand. And so the moment this report came out today, we saw some selling pressure in the market simply because we've heard the Federal Reserve in the past, multiple members of the FOMC state that they want to see a contraction in the labor market. Specifically, we've heard Fed Chairman Jerome Powell in the past also say that he wants to see the job openings continue to cool off. And so seeing that the job openings actually ticked up for August, that's not necessarily a good sign for the market. And so this is why on the channel, I often state that you want to remain data dependent, but I often also say that opportunity lurks at every corner. For example, this morning in the Push and Profit private group at 9.24 a.m. before the markets opened, I shared a trade idea where I said, for today, I will be looking at Apple stock, specifically looking to short the shares or get the 170 slash 172.5 puts once the price is greater than $173.80. And then I shared an options flow showing that there was a lot of bearish activity for Apple stock. And so if we take a look into that trade idea for Apple, we see that it was pretty much 13 cents away from that area I called out in the morning as a good area to start shorting or getting puts on Apple. And we see that after that report came out at 10 a.m., we pretty much saw Apple stock capitulating, which yielded a great return for that trade idea. Now, if you guys want to have access to the Push and Profit private group where every single day the market's open, I share my daily briefings where I talk about what's going on with the overall markets, as well as sharing trade ideas like what you guys saw today with Apple. Make sure to check out the first link in the description of this video, especially because we do have a special coupon code that is expiring this Friday. As you know, we just started off quarter four, and so I do have a mega sale taking place to really kick off the start of the fourth quarter. So again, make sure to check out that link in the description below. But I want to bring us back to what I showed you guys earlier in this video about the catalyst for today. And if you notice, we also have highlighted at 8 a.m. Atlanta Fed President Bostic speaking. Now, in yesterday's video, I've highlighted that, yes, we want to pay attention to what he says, because obviously he is a member of the Federal Reserve. But I also mentioned that we have to take what he says with a grain of salt, because he's currently not a voting member of the FOMC, meaning that he doesn't have a direct say on monetary policy currently. But nonetheless, it is important to hear what he says. And so when we parse through his speech from today, we see notably he says in quote, I am not in a hurry to raise, I am not in a hurry to reduce either. Now I want to go ahead and dissect this for you guys, because number one, you guys may be a little confused because you just heard me say that he isn't a voting member. But to clarify, he doesn't have a say on monetary policy for this year of 2023. But going into 2024, which keep in mind is just a couple of months away, he is going to be a voting member and he is going to have some weight on where the direction for monetary policy goes. And so with him saying that he doesn't plan on raising, but he doesn't plan on cutting really just goes with this idea or this narrative of higher for longer, where the Fed in its recent summary of economic projections identified to us that they actually don't plan on cutting into the later end of 2024. So obviously, the markets didn't like this speech. And so when you combine that as well as the data, well, I guess, you know, it is a recipe for disaster. But with that said, I want us to go ahead and hop into my laptop so we could take a closer look at Tesla stock. I want to go ahead and take a look at Tesla stock from a technical perspective. But again, I also want to cover some additional topics Topics that we want to be mindful of if we're going ahead and paying attention to Tesla, regardless if you're trading in the short term or investing in the long term. So let's go ahead and hop into my laptop. Alrighty, so we are officially in my laptop taking a look at Tesla stock, and there's definitely a couple.
couple of things that I want us to have a conversation about. For example, uh, just highlighting a little bit of what I mentioned earlier, 10 a.m. when that report came out, we saw this big red candlestick take place for Tesla, and it ended up continuously selling off until we saw a rebound later an hour later into the markets. But this kind of just highlights the fact that you want to pay attention to economic data. This is why I often say you don't just want to look at the squiggly lines on the charts. You just don't only want to focus on fundamentals. You don't just want to only look at economic data or alternative data. You want to use it all in confluence together because it tells a bigger story of what's going on. And I know oftentimes when I talk about different things taking place in the economy and try to relate it to Tesla, oftentimes I do get comments of individuals kind of upset set saying I need to stick into the topic of Tesla but you have to understand everything's interrelated now let's zoom out for a bit so we saw Tesla stock close a bit lower than the day prior but it honestly wasn't too bad of a day as we did kind of start to rebound yeah towards the end of the day we started selling off but let's go ahead and actually map it out so from the close of today relatively to the close of yesterday about two percent down so it's not necessarily a terrible red day it's not a, a moment to start panicking but I want us to actually take a look into a couple of things. Now, before we take a look into Tesla on a daily time frame, I also want to show us something else. So for a while, I've been pretty much screaming and preaching and saying over and over like a broken record that the United States 10-year Treasury is approaching levels that we have not seen for almost a decade now, right? Since 2007. And this is not necessarily good for Tesla stock. It's not good for the overall markets because a lot of you know financial uh, financial institutions sorry i had a little tongue twist a lot of financial institutions they're rotating capital out of the stock market and putting it into the 10-year treasury because of the fact that they are getting this high yield this high guaranteed return especially as things are getting a bit turbulent for the markets and so this isn't good and the real concern is can this go any much higher? And the fear is that this absolutely can. In yesterday's video, I'm not going to restate everything I said back in yesterday's video, but I talked a little bit about the Bank of Japan, which is the central bank of Japan. We talked a little bit about China and how both of what's going on in those foreign countries is also contributing to the 10-year treasury, which is bad, okay? This going up is definitely not good for the economy as a lot of loans are pegged to the 10-year treasury. Now, interesting enough, and this is kind of funny, I want us to take a look at the statement from the U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, who today said that she was very optimistic about the outlook for the U.S. economy. Now, this is honestly funny to me. It's, it's kind of like uh, very biased. It's like if the, it's the equivalent of me having a lemonade stand and someone coming up to me asking me where is the best lemonade to purchase and I say oh of course the best lemonade in the world is right here at my lemonade stand right it's just it's funny right it's a government official promoting a government product and of course they're not going to say anything bad but again that's not you know too much of what I want us to focus on I just thought it was kind of funny. And I don't know, maybe you guys may find that funny as well. I have a weird sense of humor sometimes. But before I talk about the economic uh, calendar and things that we want to pay attention to going into this week, let's take a look at Tesla from a daily time frame. And this is something that I've said over and over again. It's almost kind of, uh, again, like a broken record. But look where we're getting rejected. Look at where we had this red candlestick. Again, at this area where we have a lot of volume relative to price. I know sometimes individuals are like, oh my gosh, this guy is talking about this volume profile and volume relative to price once again. But it's important to really just see how this actually relates to what's going on. We're seeing the, the price action for Tesla once again have some difficulty around here. Why? Well, when there's a lot of volume relative to price, there's a lot of exchanging between buying and selling at a specific price level. And I said in yesterday's video that this presents an area where it's consolidating, just like we did previously. We saw Tesla go up, it went down, it went up, it went down, it went up, it went down. And it wasn't until we had a catalyst event take place where we saw Tesla stock kind of push up, but then we kind of started getting rejected over here, started falling down, and now we're back at it again. And the real concern is, well, if we have any negative catalysts, that could push us downwards. Now, in yesterday's video, I shared a, a tweet from Gary Black, which is a fund manager, highlighting some positive catalysts uh, going into 2024. And there was a list of, of some positive catalysts that we should absolutely be excited for, regardless if you're trading Tesla or investing in Tesla. Now, I do want to provide just a quick disclosure. I do have exposure to Tesla in my long-term portfolio. 
And so I am long on Tesla, and I do often have to say that because sometimes when I talk about being bearish on Tesla in the short term, a lot of individuals think that I'm just this Tesla bear, and that's the furthest from the truth. I'm actually uh, long-term bullish on Tesla. I have been investing since 2017, and if uh, Tesla continues to fall down, guess what? I will buy more shares of Tesla in my long-term portfolio. Of course, I just won't buy every single dip. I'll wait for that confirmation of the uptrend, uh, just as I often say. And if we finally see Tesla eventually break out of this descending trend line, well, guess what? I'll add in to my long-term portfolio as well, as that's just confirmation that we're in a new trend. But right now, things are looking pretty sticky. We're seeing Tesla move sideways. And right now, it's really a matter of what's taking place economically and what catalyst takes, uh, you know, takes place in the coming days but also we know that coming soon we get an update on tesla's fundamentals and yeah yesterday we had the delivery numbers they weren't great but they also weren't terrible right but we'll get the full story on tesla fundamentally once we get the q3 earnings coming out so definitely uh, we're gonna want to watch out for when that comes out and if you guys are subscribed to the channel or if you're not subscribed to the channel first off consider subscribing to the channel i'll definitely keep us updated on when the uh, fundamentals come out or the earnings for tesla so we could definitely stay um, abreast of what's going on but i want us to really just peel back and take a look at the economic calendar right so let's go ahead and, and zoom out real quick so tomorrow is going to be Wednesday, and we definitely have a long list of data coming out to the end of the week. It's a very, very full week. And one of the first things that we start off with with tomorrow is the ADP employment report. Now, this is the uh, job numbers that we get from the private sector. So this is the ADP private sector, and it always pretty much comes before the government numbers or the government labor uh, numbers coming out on uh, Friday, which is the U.S. unemployment uh, report and employment report, U.S. hourly wages, etc. So a lot coming out, uh, but let's kind of just stick on Wednesday first. Let's not jump uh, out of place, right? So we have the ADP employment report. Of course, we have some other data coming out that we're going to want to watch out for. I don't think this data is going to have so much of a weighting as of what we saw with the job openings from today. Yes, you want to pay attention to these three items over here, but it's not something that's going to have a huge weighting. Of course, it has some sort of influence, but mainly the, the real thing is going to be 815. You're going to want to pay attention to Tesla and also the overall markets at 815 before the market opens. And then, of course, after it opens to see the reaction, because oftentimes there's an overreaction for a reaction. Uh, then we also have Chicago. We, ha we have a few Fed uh, speakers uh, speaking. Uh, I'll definitely keep an eye out to see if there's anything interesting that they say. And I'll keep members of the Push and Profit private group updated on that as well thursday we get the initial jobless claims this comes out weekly and it's something that we're going to want to pay attention to of course we have uh some more uh fed speakers but it looks like this isn't anything related to monetary policy uh over here we may have uh mary daly speak and, and kind of touch on monetary policy so we'll, we'll want to pay attention to what she says over here and then of course we end the week with the job numbers and this is going to be a huge day for friday so a lot of volatility usually we don't have have a week jam-packed with all this data but this is a week where we we just have a lot of data and if you're a trader well this provides a lot of opportunity just as we saw today with apple let's go ahead and just quickly look at apple from a five minute time frame where again 15 cents away from the uh, area to start shorting and it provided a great trade well guess what we're gonna have a whole rest of the week with more opportunities just like this so uh, if you guys again want to be part of the push and profit private group check out the first link in the description below but also if you don't want to join the push and profit private group it's completely understandable uh, i know most members they once they pay it they usually say that they get their money's uh, return uh, as far as great trade ideas within like a week. But I also have a free option, which is our free weekly market post insights. So if you don't want to join the Push and Profit private group just yet, I also have a weekly newsletter where every single week I talk about things going on in the overall market. So definitely check that out. It's free. I'm going to have that pinned in the comment section below. And it doesn't have our trade ideas that I tell the Push and Profit private group, but it does have a just opinion on the markets that I'm sure you guys are going to find value in so again take advantage of that and with that said let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts on tesla in the short term and also in the long term i'm pretty interested on what your thoughts are as we enter into q4 i'm always like hearing your opinions i you know definitely like reading the comments and with that said before you guys go make sure to watch this next video right over here where i explain why i don't trade penny stocks and if you saw that video make sure to check out this video right over here take care guys